Hello, and welcome to part 3 of the sprites of loading and using sprites and Allegro. And as you can see, um, this seems like a long, complicated process, but once you keep doing it, it seems easy. I'm just taking the time to divide it into different little parts so that you guys learn it. Because when other people, most of the people on the internet don't teach how to load and use sprites. Some of them show you how to load sprites, but they won't don't show you how to use them. And if they show you how to use them, they don't really do a good job of doing that. So I've decided to take that on and try to explain it as easy as possible. So enough of me talking. Now if you've watched the last tutorial, you've seen me define these and I explained the reason why I defined the value for them. So now in um, I'm going to define two more integer variables. So image x, I'm going to leave that as 0. And image y, I'm going to leave that as, I'm going to equal it to down. Because I'm going to put the first, um, I'm going to make the first sprite looking down. So actually, let me make this 32. The reason being is because I want it to be standing when the, when the program starts. Because as you can see, 32 um, for the x is right here, and the y is equal to 0. That means it's going to do my standing sprite. So um, now that we got that, I'm going to do our key presses. So I'm going to put if, and if you notice, I deleted the code from the, rec the rectangle from the early tutorial, so you can delete it too. Or make a new program if you want. So if key key right, then image y is equal to right. I'm doing this for image y, not image x. So key key left, image y is equal to left. Oh, sorry. Else if else if key key down image y equals down and else if key key up image y is equal to up now for our blip function remember last tutorial when I made this all zeros and zeros so let's make this all over again so you don't get confused so we're gonna put is a masked underscore blit and oh sorry masked and what we're gonna do is draw walking and we're drawing it to the buffer so the first one or maybe I should rewrite this so you can see it's gonna be happening because I don't know what's going on mass split so yeah I wanted this thing to pop up right here so I'm drawing walking to the buffer now the source the source is where we're gonna draw the image from that's why I did the define statement so I'm gonna put image X and image Y cuz the source X and the source Y now the destination on the screen is where we're drawing our image to the screen so that's our X and Y values right and what did I do wrong? Image Y, X and Y, and oh yeah, sorry. So then our width is how wide our sprite is. So it's 32 across, and it's 32 up and down. Remember, each sprite is 32 by 32. If you watch in my earlier tutorials. So now that we got that down, let's run this program. Okay, so you see our sprite, and what, whichever direction I press, it looks in that direction. So that's pretty cool. You got it to look like that. So, pretty cool, but we want it to walk. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the image 
uh, x function. So I'm gonna do this. If not key key right. So if the if the user is not pressing right and the user is not clicking left and the user is not clicking up. I hate switching from uppercase to lowercase and not key so if the user is not pressing any of the directional buttons then you want image x equal to 32 so they're not pressing any button you want the image to stand right you want the person to stand up I'm gonna put else image x plus equals 32 and basically so if the person is pressing a button we want it to scroll from each image so we want to go from this image to this image to this image because if you go 0 plus 32 equals to here um, 32 plus 32 is equal to 64 and then what we're going to do after is make a reset to the beginning and go on and so forth so what we're going to do is we're going to go back here and we put if image x is greater than 64 then image x is equal to 0 and the reason why we do that is if it's greater than 64 then it's the next value is going to be 96 and if it goes if it starts drawing from 96 there's nothing to draw here so once it's greater than 64 you want it to revert back to 0 so it'll draw this image so let's run this program and see what's going to happen and if I press the directional button you see it looks like it's a walking animation and that's a bit laggy because I'm running so many programs at once so that was pretty cool right and let me see how much time left okay yeah I still have time okay so now if you want the sprite to walk in that direction this makes it very easy if you're walking right then we're gonna make x plus equals 5 after moving left, I'm gonna put x minus equals five. And after moving down, we're gonna put um, y plus equals five. And if you don't know why I did that, watch my early tutorials when we showed about the rectangle. And x minus equals five. And then if I run this program. When I walk, it moves in the direction I'm pressing. And when I stop, it stops walking and stares in the direction. Stop. And so that's how you get your moving sprite. And I hope you like this tutorial. It looks pretty cool once you got your own sprites and all that stuff. So hope this helped. And uh, my next tutorials are going to be loading sprites for loading individual image sprites. So not from a sprite image, but if you want to load individual sprites. And if you don't know what I mean, then just look into my next tutorial and you'll see what I mean. So thanks for watching and bye.